Hey, Internet. I'm Steve, and welcome to Raffo. This is part three of the Cosmere Connection series, where we dig into how all of these are tied into all of these. I know they're the same, but you get it. Spoilers for everything. Last video, we talked about the larger connections within the Way of Kings, so now we're jumping into Words of Radiance, the second account of Gavilar's assassination, this time from Yasna's perspective. She sees her shadow point the wrong way, which we've only seen before with axes, something to do with the cognitive realm, and sees probably ivory and other ink spren for the very first time, before dropping into Shadesmar. Coming back, we learn of her concerns about Esudan, Elokar's wife, we find out that her assassin on retainer used to own Zeth, and she sees Nail and Kalak discussing Shalash. Then her dad dies, and the rulers of the Parshendi come to confess. Shalon's back on the wind's pleasure with Yasna, the ship she originally took in the last book. Yasna gives a good summary of Realmatics and Spren's civilization in Shadesmar. Dalinar has a vision in the Pure Lake, and we hear of Sia Anat altering Spren, and the countdown to the Everstorm begins. The Everstorm, first mentioned in the epigraph of the prologue of the Way of Kings. After getting wrecked and battling the stick, Shalon meets Tavlakiv and his crew. Amaram arrives at the war camps with mentions of Kaladin's old squad. The first interlude introduces Eshenai and Venli, and refers to the events at the tower. Im was a budding truth watcher until he got stabbed by Nail. Risen is in the Reshi Isles with Vistum and her pot of grass, sees Axes and the female presenting Reshi King, then falls off a crab cliff and gets cheery cheery. Shallan suspects that the Ghost Bloods, first mentioned in the Way of Kings, are behind the attack on Yasna. Adolin talks to his sword and wins another for Renarin, who doesn't like holding it, because he's already bonded Gliss. Later, Adolin notices he's not wearing his glasses anymore. Kaladin meets the old Swordmaster Zahel, who, as we all know, is actually Vasher from Warbreaker on extended interplanetary holiday. His color-rooted figures of speech are delightful, grumpy old codger. Shallan meets a bunch of deserters, including Gaz, who conspicuously disappeared before the end of Way of Kings. Rock shoes away Naj trying to draw Bridgman in Chapter 31. Kaladin rides the High Storm again and mentions Braes. Zeth arrives to Merc Dalinar, who pulls off a last clap, and then gets pushed out a window by a one-armed Kaladin. Cal oomphs his arm back, which Zeth had previously said was impossible. Zeth runs away, and Kaladin finds Hobber, once again unable to walk. Did Brandon just name him Hobbler without the L? Shallan summons a standard-looking shard blade to burn some tin eyes, then plans to infiltrate the Ghost Bloods in order to find Erythiru. Zahel is awakened by his life sense. Because of his divine breath, he's at least at the fifth heightening. He misses the other voice in his head. Aww. Taln hears a discussion with Borden, Dalinar, and Elokar. Borden recounts meeting Wit at the end of Way of Kings, and traveling back to the Shattered Plains with Taln and his shard blade, which they apparently have no records of. Sketchy. The epigraphs from part three are from the in-world book Words of Radiance, many sections of which deal with the recreants. Rushu, the hot ardent, apparently read the flamespread interlude in Way of Kings. Training in the chasms, Sigzel mentions his former master. And Shallan goes to Mraze's hideout. Oh man, there's so many little Easter eggs in this chapter. Given the mask she wears, Ayatil is southern Skadrian in descent, though we know through a wob that she was raised in Silverlight. Then there's all of Mraze's trophies, a vial of white sand from Taldane, which apparently had recently absorbed some stormlight, a pair of hemallergic spikes, presumably from a chondra, a cutting from the royal locks of Idris, a branch of a fane tree on Yolan, a silver knife from Threnody, one of the tears of Edgley flowers from Nalthus, and even a sample of pink aether from... wherever the heck aethers are from. Flashback! Shallan once met a parrot named Jek Son of Nun, which was Zeth's name in the Way of Kings Prime. That was right before she met Hoyd for the first time, whom she saw dump a packet of probably zinc shavings into his drink. In this chapter, we learn that Hoyd has at least some dealings with the Skybreakers, as he was in contact with Helleran. A lot of the things he says here reference other books and events, like being terribly ineffective at hurting people or having trouble himself understanding the nature of lies. Hoyd riots Shallan here, and is able to get her to Lightweave. Was she at that point with Pattern three and a half years ago? The Bridgemen go out drinking, and Rock tells of meeting Lunu Anaki in the Horn Eater Peaks, one of the times Hoyd used them for the perpendicularity. Kaladin meets Graves and Danlin, who Adolin dated in the Way of Kings. Danlin. Not 
Graves. I mean, Adolin's dated a lot of people. Meeting with Mraes, Shallan hears them talk about Thytokar, Teravangian, and Rastaris. Wit's the coachman for Shallan and Adolin's date. Basically, any appearance of Hoyd is worth mentioning. He reminds Kaladin that he lost his flute. In the Menagerie, Cal remembers the White Spine incident in Way of Kings. Honor is dead. SPOILERS, Kaladin! Yakimov is in the disadvantaged duel. We first met him in the White House in Way of Kings, and he fought on the plains with Adolin. This fight scene is incredible, but there's not really a lot of ties to anything else. Lift here! She gets her own novella, but there's some good references to other stuff in this interlude. Obviously, she's being pursued by Nail, Herald of Justice, who apparently also has a Larkin, and we get some hints about realmatic theory, Lift's history, cultivation, even a bit about the different Radiant Orders. My favorite tidbit here is the fact that Shalash had recently visited the royal palace before this, as one person in a painting of the Heralds has been scratched off. Zeth ran to Erythiru and gives hints as to why he was made truthless. Eshenai stages a coup, and her dissenters escape into the chasms. The epigraphs of Part 4 are a response from Frost to Hoyd's letter from the Way of Kings Part 2 epigraphs. And boy do they talk about some good stuff, much of which we still don't know what it's referencing. The dead gemstone? But there's references to the Shattering, the Oath Pact, Rays and Tanavast, even the Sixteen Shards. Wit visits captured Captain Kaladin. He makes references to various other magic systems, potentially passing the guards with Ferukemi, maybe even Speed Bubbles, admitting Perfect Pitch, which comes at the Second Heightening, though how he incepts the story of Fleet, I do not know. And then Dalinar tells Cal that he was the one who exiled Rashon to Hearthstone. Vale and Ayatil have their team up, going to check on Tong. When Ayatil feigns madness, her mutterings are startlingly similar to someone who is under Ruin's control. When Shallan attempts to lightweave, Tong recognizes her as one of Ishar's knights, not Shalash. After Kaladin's release, Navani mentions shh for the first time, and also that she and Gavilar were having problems. After the feast where Dalinar's visions are revealed, Wit tells him that he's found a place he needs to be, presumably on another shard world, and that Odium is looking for him. Exactly how is Hoyd manipulating fortune? Eh. On the trip out to see the harvested chrysalis, Kaladin mentions Terra a couple times. Not much happens on the trip through the chasms. Shaladin isn't going to happen, guys. We see Shallan's lullaby to her father, before which the Soulcaster gets broken. We get recaps of both Kaladin and Shallan's histories in their little hidey hole. What big thing was striding the storm? Cal has a vision of the Stormfather, who calls him Child of Tanavast, and says that Syl is dead. Teravangian gets his own interlude, arriving in Yaakoved after Civil War. We find out more about the Diagram and certain unmade, Moalach, Death Rattles, Nergaul, the Thrill, heck, Ashertmarn seems to be influencing Kolinar based on the first interlude. We also get some significant tidbits about Shinovar. They've got eight of the ten Honor Blades, including Zeth's. The Diagram already suspects Yasna and Shallan are Surgebinders, with Shallan potentially receiving training from Halloran. The last remaining Vedan High Prince, Valam, is killed by his heterochromatic son, Redden, who previously visited the Devar Estate. I think Valam's death rattle is significant to a future event we haven't seen yet, referenced by a couple other death rattles. In fact, the death rattles in general just deserve another video. Julie! Write that down! We also confirm in this interlude that Teravangian was working with Gavilar, and that Gavilar was receiving the same visions Dalinar later saw. After Amaram's disgrace, Dalinar says holding a shard blade feels wrong. Bashan, the portly scout that first warns of Parshendi, was the Huntmaster when the Chasm Fiend attacked in the Way of Kings. The map of the Chasms appears to be a Naj copy sent to Chrysala. Elokar meets with Kaladin, and there's a bunch of hints that Elokar was on his way to bonding a cryptic. Dalinar attracts Glory Spren with his St. Crispin's Day speech. Zell keeps dropping hints of his world hoppiness, talking with Cal. He calls Hoyd dust. On the Shattered Plains, Felt is a colon scout, reporting to Lynn. If you recall, we first saw Felt in Mistborn when he was working as a spy for House Venture. He made his way to Roshar, apparently, with his wife, and has survived for the past... 300 years. We see Storm Spren clamber out of slain Parshendi, but not out of Eshenai because she gets knocked into a chasm. Standing up to Moash, <laughs> Kaladin says the second ideal of the Windrunners, and Syl, who the Stormfather previously declared dead, forms as a shard blade. Read Rhythm of War. 
also, apparently the glyph made by Frost when that happens is important, but we don't know why or even what the glyph was. Part of the diagram probably mentions Hoyd, the Wanderer, the one who makes no sense, if ever there was a description for Hoyd. After the fight on the plateau that sends Dalinar into the sky, Zeth blocks a blow from Adolin that breaks his wrist. It's broken in the beginning of Oathbringer. Syl gives some pretty good explanations of honor blades and shards after the fight. Apparently the bridgeman had to abandon Bridge 4 in the storm and used Bridge 17 to get back. Shallan meets Mraze in Erythru. Her family apparently has a long history of involvement in these events. Longer than her father? Or Helleran and the Skybreakers? She relives her mother's death with illusions she can touch, including a strong box and shard blade, which Pattern says was him. Mm. The King Man of Alethkar gets mothered in Little Herdaz. We may eventually get a novella about King Lopin I. Amaram writes a letter to Rastaris, leader of the Sons of Honor, which gets transmitted via Span read, which means there must have been an intermediary. Amaram muses on the treatment of those considered insane, echoed by Kaladin in Rhythm of War. Ayatil tries to blowgun him, but Tong catches the darts and she runs away really fast. Nail un unalives Zeth, presumably using a regrowth fabrial of some kind. We get hints of Zeth's past, and previews of his future from Nail. Plus, Nightblood! How'd he get here? Dalinar has a vision, possibly of the god beyond. Adolin and Sadius admire a painting of lions, which there are none on Roshar. And then they tussle. Was it murder? Yes. Was it wrong? Eh. Dalinar hears of a plague in the Pure Lake, which is actually just the common cold, as brought by Galadin, Bayon, and Demo. He forces a bond with the Stormfather, and we get the first Radiant Super Friend team up in the new Fortress of Solitude. Kaladin resolves to head home. Hoyd philosophizes to some surprisingly responsive Kremlings next to a river. He uses the word coin again. Yasna else calls herself out of Shadesmar, which is cool. Hoyd apparently spent a year in a large stomach. Did he get eaten by a dragon? Apparently a shard blade wouldn't do too much to him. Hmm. Yasna interviewed some high spren. Salvation from this mess is to be found in the hearts of men. Naj copied the cover of Navani's notebook, and of course, the Ars Arcanum is written by Chris. The connections are getting thicker. Thanks for watching! As always, thank you to the incredible artists who've allowed me to share their work. Go support them in the description. Thank you as well to my Patreon supporters, who get to watch all of my videos up to a week early. Doug, you are my Numuhuku Makiyaki Aya Lunamore. My rock. Oh man, and I could smell what you're cooking. We are now entering the holiday season, and my last video was actually an interview with Mark Scrutter, the creator of the Secret Sazed Sander-centric gift exchange. If you haven't participated in that before, you can see all the details about how to sign up in that previous video. With the Lost Metal being released in a few weeks, my next video will be a recap of Mistborn Era 2. Speaking of, there are still tickets available for Dragonsteel Con, and I'm gonna be on a couple panels there, so come and hang out! See, it's like read and find out, but more different because like the and and the out are the same, but it's like come and find and read and ha it's, 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 it makes sense.